Good evening everyone! We are now live in CAD Community Asia and Autodesk Community Philippines for Dynamo for Civil 3D uh, Sheet Set Manager. So inviting everyone to uh, please do share our live stream training and inviting you to register. You may see the registration form in the event description. Inviting you to join us in Meetup, Autodesk Community Philippines, and in Facebook. Okay, I'll be adding um, Sir John Mark. Hello. Hello and uh, good evening everyone. And yeah, welcome to another live stream with uh, Autodesk Group Network, Autodesk Community Philippines. Yes, and uh, before we begin, uh, shout out to our friends uh, who made this live stream possible. So, Bataan Peninsula State University, Palawan State University, CPSU, Junior Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers, our friends at Digital Creatives of Philippines, IRIS, College of Engineering Student uh, government. Uh, thank you so much. JPSME TUP Tagig, JPSME CMU, JPSME USJR, JPSME Xavier University, Mapua Manufacturing and Mechanical Engineers Student Council, Batanga State University Mechatronics Engineering Student Society, Holy Angel University, JPSME Bicol University. PSME, JPSME, and PUP, Student Unit, Philippine Society of Mechanical Engineers. Okay, so, yep. Uh, is this your first time to, heard about, to hear about uh, Dynamo, Miss Nelsie? No, this is not the, the first time. Well, we are um, conducting... Before the pandemic, the BAM Day. So we have uh, speakers who uh, tackle about Dynamo and uh, oh. same thing. <laughs> okay, so to our uh, to our friends, to our uh, listeners, viewers, participants who are with us right now, if you think Dynamo for Civil 3D and Sheet Set Manager is beneficial to someone you know please invite them uh, to join us okay so yep uh ed uh for those who would like to take a hold of certificate of event participation from autodesk uh, please register in the video description below yeah shout out also to our cyber force from pamantasan ng lungsod ng muntinlupa Thank you for <laughs> uh, being here. Okay, so uh, the announcements uh, from your side, uh, Miss Nelsie. Uh, I'll be announcing other things uh, later. Awesome. Okay, so let me share my screen instead. Okay, so once more to our uh, viewers uh, this evening, and may you be anywhere in the world, uh, we have a tons of a live stream, the training coming your way. So if you'd like to learn more about Autodesk softwares, inviting everyone uh, to join us in YouTube. Uh, it's Autodesk Community uh, Philippines. So, yep, uh, to be notified of our upcoming live stream trainings, please do subscribe. And uh, for the list of our, our upcoming live stream trainings, all you need to do is head over to videos, uploads. And then at the drop down, there's upcoming live uh, streams. So, what I'm seeing after our uh, live stream this evening, the the ones uh, would be following up would be Master 2D Sketching in Inventor, Revit Structure, and Part Modeling in Fusion 360. 
Okay, so yep, uh, our speaker this evening uh, hails all the way from uh, Texas. So without uh, further ado, I'll be adding our uh, guest this evening. It's Adam Riley. <laughs> hey, good evening, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so it's morning right now. Uh, Adam is uh, based in uh, Texas? Yes, just north of Austin. It is just after 7 o'clock in the morning for me. Okay, so hoping you're having a good cup of uh, coffee there. <laughs> yep. yep. Uh, so before we begin, uh, as mentioned earlier, we have uh, students wa watching us here as well. So would you be so kind uh, to share your uh, your career path? How did you end up uh, uh, in, in uh, Henderson Professional Engineers? Uh, sure. Uh, so I started out way back in 1998 nine something like that uh my first real job was in civil engineering as just a drafter back in 2000 2001 uh throughout the years i've just gone from uh basic drafting up to like designer level uh because i really like cad i've always tinkered in it i've always played with it looked for the best ways to do things find ways to make it faster uh so as I've gone from company to company, I've built up that skill set and knowledge to try and improve things. And that's where I got to where I am now is because uh, I just was always looking for the best way to do things. My current firm basically gives me leeway to do anything I want with CAD. Uh, I have two CAD technicians that I direct and we make all kinds of really cool stuff really efficiently really fast uh i used I'm coming to use dynamo a lot more in civil now that it's available uh, it's been a long time coming i've been looking forward to it since before i knew it was going to be on civil when i realized it was on revit i was like this is one of the coolest things i really wish it was in civil and then they brought it to civil and i was all over it <laughs> wow yep uh just to add the adam the pandemic, the COVID thing is uh, really hammering our uh, country right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and mostly everyone is getting hungry. Uh, I'm sure the people here are also curious with regards to the status of uh, COVID uh, in your place. So, uh, so we've started rolling out vaccines. Uh, we've been under lockdown for a while. Our state in particular has resisted a lot of that. And that's just a cultural thing. Texas has always been, we stand alone in a nation. Um, but the vaccines have only been rolling out for high risk people. So our elderly, our healthcare mm -hmm. workers, our uh, high risk personnel, like my wife works as a as a school, so she's already gotten her vaccine. Um, I have not. I'm still on the list to get mine. My son still hasn't gotten his, and he has been looking forward to being able to go back to school in person all year, <laughs> which is <laughs> extreme for him because he didn't like going to school to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Say with my daughter, she prefers now, she prefers being at home instead of uh, uh, going to school. So, yep, uh, curious to know if you've ever been into, if you've ever been to Philippines? I have not. Uh, I've only traveled a little bit. The farthest I've gone is Europe. Um, my son and I are actually planning to go to Eastern Europe next summer as a graduation trip kind of thing. Um, but I do want to try and go all the way to the other side of the world back at some point. I just have a busy life and I really don't have time for vacations. <laughs> <laughs> same here. Same here. Yep. Uh, yeah. Curious to know your hobby. So what burns your time? Do you do music? I don't do a lot more than CAD. So 
this what I'm going to show is something I created in my spare time for fun. Um, oh. But when I step away from CAD, I'd love to go out in my garden and try and uh, work there. I've had a terrible time. If anybody's seen the news this last year, Texas was hit by a huge snowstorm and it yeah. killed almost everything in my backyard. My grapevine and my crossvine are the only two things that survived. And I'm kind of grateful at least my grapevine survived because that didn't look like it was going to survive, survive at all. Um, and then beyond that, I just play some video games with my son every once in a while. What video games uh, is that? Uh, he like <laughs> he likes the World Conquest uh, turn-based games. I like the first-person shooter like Destiny 2. So we kind of clash on which one we're going to play together. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. I think uh, in the Philippines, uh, plantilla is what they call it. Uh, the, a trend that we're in, they do... They they take care of plants. They collect plants, so it's a trend. <laughs> Same here. It's a trend nowadays in the Philippines. Everyone's uh, collecting plants uh, and growing plants. They call it plantilla, plantitos and plantitas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so without further ado, do you have uh, any? Uh, feel free to share your screen. Sure. We're seeing it now. All right. So if you're not familiar with it, in Civil 3D, in order to find Dynamo, you're going to need to be on your Manage tab. And it'll be this button over here. Uh, when I work in Dynamo and I'm playing with a sheet set, I like to have it open so I can see the sheet set as well. Uh, so we'll we'll just keep it kind of stacked like this so we can see both. Uh, we're going to be using a custom package. If you're not familiar with uh, installing those, you'll come up to the packages, pull down, search for a package. When this syncs with the server, you can do a quick search. And being a little bit vain myself, I put my initials in it. So you can always just easily search AMR and find the things I've put out there, both this one, which is a really low level civil 3D tool stuff that doesn't work well. And then this one, which is what we're gonna talk about. Uh, as you can see, I spent a lot of time last year during the pandemic working on this and putting out updates. Uh, at this point, I ported it to 2020 because Dynamo is available for both 2020.2 and 2021 of civil 3D. Uh, since 2022 is released, I haven't had time to go back and port this for that. Um, there is kind of a issue with that because of the way the Sheet Set Manager API is split per version. This is only going to work on specific versions, and I have to really figure that out because now that this is says 2021, I can't go back and update the 2020, and I may have to work around that. I've been talking to Autodesk about that to see if we can work that out. Anyway, awesome. so if you're in 2020, you'll want to use this install. If you're in 2021, just use the latest. I'm going to go ahead and install it. Then we're going to close the package manager and we can just create a new graph. And you'll see that add on down here under the add-on section. Uh, when you're working with the Sheet Set Manager, I like to change this to manual because uh, basically you're working with the DST file directly and any iterative changes you make that are automatic, it's going to keep trying to make them. And it, because it's a file outside of Dynamo, essentially, you're going to potentially have some write issues stuff like that. So when you're working with it, you just kind of have to be cognizant about a lot of the things that are going on in the background. And it is a little funky to work with because I've basically ported the entire API as is. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's a little bit weird. Uh, for instance, you have to have a sheet set manager object in order to do anything. This object basically represents this whole palette and everything inside of it. So in order to do any work, this is the first node you're ever going to need to put in. Uh, you'll come down to the sheet set manager section, click the create sheet set manager. The next step you're going to need to do if you're making a new sheet set is just create a database. Now the database is just the DST file. So if you're familiar with the sheet set manager and what goes on normally in your day-to-day -day operations, uh, you'll always have a DST file that stores everything, bullet extension DST, and it will be saved wherever your project is. Uh, but once you use the create database node, you'll see all the inputs that you're need that you'll need. So the first thing you're always going to need is the sheet set manager object to link in, and then you're going to need a file name. Uh, so we can just really simply type in a string, and I just have this here. We'll call it a, a sheet set. It'll need the extension on it as well. We'll link that in. This template file name would be a template for the DST. So if you have a sheet set template you want to use and you know the path, you can plug it in right here. Otherwise, you're just going to use a blank template essentially, and it'll be a blank file. If we were to run this, we'll see that it ran completely. Uh, when we expand this, you'll see that we now have a new database and it's called new sheet set. If I were to open up the file location and pan that over, we'll see this is that new sheet set. And I can click on that to open it over here. And you can see that it's a blank sheet set with nothing in it. So all the base information is completely empty. At this point, once we have our database, in order to access the content in it, we need what is called a sheet set object. And we, that would be by expanding the sheet set node and click the by database, where we just pass the database through that. Running that again, we'll see that we now have that sheet set object. And at this point, we can actually just start working with that sheet set, making changes as we want. Before, uh, well, most of the steps that you're going to end up wanting to do is create sheets, uh, create subsets. Before you do any of that, you really need to start setting some data to the sheet set. A couple of the specific things you have to set before you start creating sheets is the new template uh, file and the sheet location. And that would be under this whole block of uh, objects. So this is their modify section. You come down here and you'll set the new sheet set location and you'll set the new sheet template. And both these require the sheet set as a first node. So you'll just link both of those in there. And then for your sheet set location, you'll just need a string or a path. And I'll just plug that in here and I'll say, I'm going to put it in that sheets folder. So if I were to go back to here, I have this sheets folder that I want to put all my sheets in. And we'll just link that in here. Don't really, don't really want that over there. And then our new template we would need to fill out, that would be our template file. So again, I'm going to use a string. And I'm going to paste in there sheet PWP. Oops. And because your template can have more than one layout tab, you always also need to provide a, the name of the layout tab. And in this file, I know that my layout tab is 34 by 22. I'm going to plug that in there and then run this again. And if it runs properly, the output of each of these nodes should give you the sheet set object back. So you're going to be passing the sheet set in, the sheet set will come back out. And always double check. That's why we have the palette over here. And just come back down to the properties of it and we can look. Now that we have run that, we can see that we've added the sheet set 
or the sheet's location and the sheet creation template. So just to verify, if I were to open this, it'll look into that sheet and it'll show me all the different layout tabs that are in it. And now that we have all of that, we can go through and add any other information we want. And because it's all downstream, we could just either continue to add them all right here, or we can even come downstream and start adding more items and information to it. Uh, like if we want to set our project number for the sheet set, we can come through here and just link that um, and then add a value. Now, when we're interacting with a sheet set, Every value, every property that's in a sheet set, like all of these, these are all string values. So you're always passing a string. Even when you're renumbering your sheets, uh, most people think of that as a number, integer, double, whatever, if you're talking programming speak. But the sheet set really sees it as a string. So you're always going to be passing strings in as values. And let's just say, We'll call it the project number, project number. And we'll just run that again. Oh, and we have an error. What do we have here? Oh, at this point, uh, it's probably because I've run this too many times trying to create this file over and over because what this loop is doing is just rerunning the create database, rerunning all of this. Uh, if we start getting this kind of error, the easiest thing to do to continue to do your work without running through and having to recreate the sheet over and over is go back to your sheet set manager section, it will expand, and then get an o use the open database. And we'll just click through there, click through here, and link through here. We'll just unlink that for now. And there we go. So now all we're doing is using an existing database that we've already created that way we're not recreating it every time. Because eventually that's gonna start slowing performance. And you're not gonna really see it until a lot later on. Mm. And if I were to come back over here and look at the properties one more time, we can see now the project number has been set. So now that we have all of our, essentially the data we wanna set, uh, you can always go through and set any other values you wanna set. The next step most people want to do is add a sheet. And in order to do that, you would just come down to the sheet uh, category and just click add the sheet set. We have a few other options, uh, add the sheet set after and add the sheet set before. And these just basically let you control where in the list you're going to put them. So if you have a specific sheet already stored in a node, you want to add a new sheet before it or after it, you would just pass that in uh, at right here. Uh, you just actually would need the index number. So if you have five sheets and you want it to be number three, you would just put it in here as, well, and for the after, you would put in number two. For the before, you would put in number three. So I'm going to just remove that for now. I'm going to link this up and then I'm going to just create a new sheet. So at this point we need again another string. Uh, we're going to need forgetting I have to just type click and then type. Put in here oh no just the string of the file name. New sheet and link that in. Run, and what did I do wrong? Probably needed a DWG on the end of that. No. Add the sheet set operation failed. All right. So let me, because there is some issue somewhere that I've not been able to work out. Occasionally, this will happen. Uh, so I'm going to just save this and then reopen it. Right. Yeah, and 
for whatever reason, that actually just fixes that. So now we can see in the sheet set, we have a new sheet. But because at this point, we haven't given it any information, now we have to start going through and add information. Like we can see it has no name, no number, nothing at all. And then we'll come down to the modify section and we can just set a, set a number, set a title. And so in both of these, we're gonna just plug in the sheet, add another string for the name. And then another string for a number. So we're gonna call it just one. Put that in, hit run. Oh, let me just remove that from here. Okay, and then, well then we'll just do this again. <clears throat> There we go. And I ran into that uh, issue the other day, but when I wrote this originally, I never really hit that. So I'm wondering if something happened in the API over the last year. But now that I've figured out that all you have to do is save and reopen this, uh, it usually fixes that. I'm trying to find ways to work around that so we don't have to keep dealing with that, but that is a, fairly quick way to uh, get around that yep so once more save and reopen if uh, anything else happens right yeah and it's kind of common because you're working with files that exist and you're essentially over uh, repetitively recreating them you can either go through and create branching nodes to work with stuff you've already got existing but if your whole goal is to make a graph that creates a whole bunch of stuff, then that kind of just gets tedious and you end up having to just go through and delete stuff, save, close, open kind of thing. Either way, it's Ad a little tedious. Adam, so. once more, has it been a year <clears throat> uh, since uh, Dynamo is available in Civil 3D? How long, how long was it? How long was it? Uh, it has, yeah, about a year since. They released it fully with 2021, but when they did that, they opted to release it with the 2020.2 update. Okay. Uh, it was very limited at the time, and they've been slowly adding to it. Uh, if I were to scroll up here, it was just this stuff that they added, and it was very limited. Uh, I believe a lot more of, has been added to the 2022 release but I haven't really gotten an opportunity to play with it yet. Like I only downloaded it two days ago and still haven't installed it. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so at this point, we know how to create our sheet set and create a sheet. Uh, that only gets us so far because now we're essentially stuck to just the sheets that we hard coded in here. Uh, one of the things that I thought about doing when I got to this point on my own was, well, how do I create a whole series of sheets? Um, we could sit here and create a copy of all this information over and over and over, or we could just utilize Dynamo's ability to uh, iterate and do a loop through a whole list of objects. And the hard part was really deciding how to feed that information in. Uh, what I ended up coming up with was this idea using an Excel file. So if I were to open this file, we can see I have like a basic list of sheets. Uh, I've given it a column to tell me what it is. So a number, a title, and I even thought about adding this true false value. Because if you have like your own standard list of sheets and you're like, oh, I don't want this sheet or that sheet. Like you can come in here and just make changes to these. So I don't want those two sheets, right? And we can use uh, the Excel functions that are in here to read those in. Uh, we have an import and export Excel data node in Dynamo already. 
So let's go ahead and just delete this information for now. And we'll look at how to import that information. Uh, first, we'll need the file itself. And so that would be, uh, well, our first thinking would be that would be a string. So we have a file and it's called sheetlist.xmls. Did I say that? No, xlsx. And you could use a file getter node. It's just a lot easier to paste it in and type it in if you know exactly where it's at. Uh, the sheet name, so if we go back to our that sheet list, it's gonna be the tab here that we're looking for. So sheet list, again, string, sheet list. And then these two values are optional. Uh, then we can just click run. Oh, and we have an error and it's saying it wanted a file info and we gave it a string. Uh, okay, so well, what do we do to get that? So we do a search for file and we can look through here. Uh, whereas there's one file for path. So that's gonna give us a file from a string. We'll move that to here, link that and pass that back through. Click run and that should have worked except for I mistyped that. There we go. Or did I? Okay, well, let's change that out then. Uh, and we'll use this. There we go. Now you can see we've imported all of that data and it'll it's basically a list of lists. So we have our big list that is made up of a list of each row. So number, title, create sheet, that two, plat, false, et cetera, et cetera. But once we have that, we don't really need the number, title, sheet, or create sheet row. So I'm going to pan over here and I'm going to actually just drop that. Pass that in. Uh, need a number. That'll just be the first object. We run that one more time. We'll see we went from 45 objects to 43 because we just dropped those first three items, the first list essentially. Now, at this point, it's a little more difficult to work with these lists because each, uh, each sheet's worth of data in a row is more difficult to extract at a time. So we kind of want to reorder this list to work with it a lot easier. So we're going to transpose this list. Uh, you know, at this point, we can make this automatic because we're just working with this data. Right, so we're looking at, now we have a list of all of our sheet numbers, a list of all of our sheet names, a list of all this true false. And because I've added this in, we actually want to take advantage of this and start looking at just the sheets we've tagged as true. And that's going to use um, a get item at index so that we can just pull those indexes out of there. We're going to pass that list in again. And we're going to look at item or list number two. So that'll be a number again. And that just gives us our true false column. And at this point, we start removing all of that information. So we're going to use uh, another list, um, all indices of this list. 
and we want it to match all of the trues. So we come back and all we see are all the items that we have a true value in. And because this is live streaming the data back and forth, we can actually come back here and say, oh no, I really wanted this to not be in here either. Save that file and that automatically gets truncated pretty much immediately. And then once we have all of that in there, we can go back and use that get index again. We want to pass, uh, which list do we want? Um, probably that whole transposed list. And we're going to use these indices. No. A new number. Ah, wrong one. I want just plain number. Plug in zero. Now we're going to get just our sheet numbers that should have corresponded to that. Uh, probably. No. I'm looking at my wrong part of my little cheat sheet over here. <laughs> yeah, that should have worked because I just did the same thing. I took my transposed list Plugged it in here, and I plugged this in, and that should have just gave me that. There we go. Why is it giving me an error? Oh, well, it's giving me the data I want. Yeah. But it's yeah. also giving me this weird extra list. That's odd. Huh. Yeah, it's something's going on. Let me try this. No? Same error. Eh. Okay. But now that we, well, let me try my other sample. Because I have actually worked through this a little bit. where we got that same information. Oh, that right there. <laughs> I forgot about that part. That's honestly, I think, the key part that I forget every time, our lacing. There we go. So we have to change the rate lacing the cross product. And that gives us the list the way we'll want it. So we see all of our sheets that we've marked as true, all of our title and number, and then we can start working with that information. And at that point, we can just start creating our sheets again. So come back down here, create sheets. Had the sheet set. Uh, you know, need to probably stop doing that because it started adding files over here that I wasn't paying attention to. <laughs> Let me delete these real quick. Make sure we didn't have any files we don't want. There we go. All right. What do you so, suggest, Adam? Do we need to turn that always to manual or automatic? What do you prefer? I prefer manual just because there's so much going on in the background. Yeah. But it's easier to keep an eye on that if it is. Yeah, okay. I don't need that one. I have this one already. So we're going to just hopefully step right through this. 
So we're going to need, let's say, another item at index. Um, remember, I think we're going to want one. So unplug that. This should give us our sheet list. Yep, just our sheets. And we can just plug in file names and this should just work. I say that. Okay, now we have a list of 10 sheets. Uh, again, they don't have any information. So we need to make sure we set the names. So sheet title. While we're at it, let's just go ahead and set numbers for it as well. So sheet, uh, I don't want to copy those. We're going to make that zero. Run back through it. There we go. <clears throat> and there's all of our sheets added in, well, that was probably three seconds. So we have all of our files in here, all of our sheets in here, all numbered, all set up. You could ideally use this to set a whole bunch of information for your sheet set and just have this go really quickly. Nice. Um, like, uh, just to throw this out there, there's an item in here that uh, I've created specifically for renumbering sheets, this one right here. Uh, this isn't part of the API. This is just something that someone asked me for so that she could renumber her sheets really quickly. Uh, you would just plug in a list of sheets, um, the number you want to start at and how many you want to step by. And if you want to add, like in this case, we put C in front of it, we could put a prefix or a suffix. And those are just optional values. So that'll take out a lot of time that would be taken doing that manually or using any other tool. And you don't have to write your own with this, at least. Uh, that's just an extra thing. But this is the basic way you would structure or could structure creating sheets. You don't necessarily have to use an Excel sheet. You could use some other data input. You could hard code it in here if you really wanted to. It just shows that if you have a list of data, you can really quickly and easily create your sheets using your own standards, your own templates, your own settings. Um, uh, but before we get too far away from that, I just want to throw out a couple of caveats to this uh, because this is using the sheet set, which is technically external to AutoCAD. Uh, you have to be a little bit careful about the files. Sometimes it, um, if someone else is trying to work in that file and you're doing stuff, you're going to end up overriding or redoing stuff. Uh, it does not like if you switch your drawing. Um, that's a basic problem with Civil 3D and Dynamo is if you can only work in this drawing. but you're also technically working outside of that drawing. Uh, so you can't manipulate any of these sheets from inside Dynamo, at least the drawing side of it. Like you can't tell Dynamo, okay, now that we have all these sheets, go open the sheet and do something. It won't do that. Uh, that's a limitation that Autodesk is still trying to work on uh, because Dynamo was really built for single file access you can only really work in the file you open Dynamo in. And even if you open another file and then close that file, Dynamo sometimes will break that link and you'll just have to close and reopen Dynamo. It's, it's the nature of Dynamo and can't really get around that right now. Um, and with that, are there any questions on this? Uh, there's. A lot more to show on this, but they're really kind of advanced and yeah. 
really up to what a person wants to do. So. Yep. Uh, uh, okay. So, uh, can you share to us uh, once more? Uh, there's tons of people here who are who are uh, first time who have heard about uh, Dynamo. Mm -hmm. Can you quickly share what Dynamo is for those who are okay. hearing Dynamo yeah. for the first time? So, if you don't know what Dynamo is, it is a visual programming interface. Uh, it reads left to right generally. So it's basically no code that you have to actually write. Uh, you just pick objects and methods you want to manipulate that object with. A lot of the tools in here will let you do that. It's really powerful because it's a, a list-based kind of thing, kind of like Lisp if you've done any Lisp writing in AutoCAD. You're just taking a bunch of lists and applying a bunch of things to each object in that. Uh, that's the most basic way I can say that without getting too technical and uh, maybe losing some people. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep, uh, guys, so that's a visual uh, scripting. Okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. How long have you been uh, using uh, Dynamo, Adam? Uh, I've only really been using it uh, about a year since it came out for Civil. I did play with it a little when I saw it released for Revit, but I, at the company I was at at the time, didn't use Revit, so it was really hard to find a fit for it. But as soon as it came out to Civil, I was on it. Um, there was a lot of stuff it was missing for civil. So I even took to writing a few things just to learn how it worked under the hood. Because to me, that's the best way to learn something is just to know it that in depth. Uh, I wrote this one. This was actually the second thing I wrote for it. Um, I wrote a tool that plays with parcels that uh, I'm just not happy with. So it's not anywhere that anyone can get. And then the first one I wrote, I just dumped the API for points because those weren't available. And that's on the package manager as well. Yeah. Uh, that was that other one you could see when I searched for this one. Uh, some students here are curious. Uh, what's the big uh, difference between AutoCAD and Civil 3D? The biggest difference is... Uh, Differentiator. The the kind of objects that it works with. So in um, Civil 3D, you have this prospector where you have all these specialized objects that are for civil people or for civil engineering, uh, survey data, services, alignments, pipes and profiles, uh, corridors, which we use for modeling roadways and other linear features. Um, Pipe networks for like storm sewers, pressure parts for like water lines, stuff like that. Uh, it has a lot of analysis tools in there to help us do those designs, uh, surface modeling, so that we can do grading plans and something like that. Uh, for whatever reason, Autodesk decided that Civil was where they were going to give Dynamo first. So if you don't have Civil 3D, unfortunately, you don't have Dynamo yet. I think it's on the roadmap. They haven't really been clear and upfront about that, but they're still developing the basic AutoCAD object uh, part of this as well. So I would imagine at some point this might make it in there yeah. to the basic AutoCAD. I'm really hoping it does so that everyone else can have this tool because it's pretty amazing. It's pretty powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I grasped onto Lisp. Uh, way back in the day, and this is much easier to learn than that was, and much more powerful. Yep. Uh, just to reiterate, uh, Dynamo is not yet available for AutoCAD. Yep, just for Civil 3D. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's uh, yeah, that's kind of odd. There's, uh, I think, there's much more users for AutoCAD. Mm -hmm. Any idea what's the reason behind? Uh... 
making civil 3d first i think it's just the the opportunity to do a lot of stuff to try and get it into the market um if they can build it out for civil then they're basically building it for everyone because there's a lot of autocad stuff under civil and once they've built out civil it just would make sense to be ready for everyone else yeah 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 uh is Civil 3D uh, uh, an acquired uh, company before or uh, totally created from scratch, derived, derived uh, from AutoCAD? Yeah, it's um, a vertical of Autodesk's AutoCAD. So it's something that they built from scratch. I think they started development in 2002 or three. Uh, first version that I ever tested was back in 2005. So it's been around for a while. We're still having a lot of trouble getting people to adopt it though yeah <laughs> yeah and i'm seeing yeah for dynamo i'm seeing uh it's also being uh, integrated uh with uh, fusion 360. Mm -hmm. yeah so i think there's a lot going on with dynamo yeah i i see a lot of stuff going on with it a lot of people are really getting into it uh, i think the market for all the other software platforms has really been pushing toward this type of uh, tool for helping automate uh, generative design has really been a key yeah. driver for how this is taken off so quickly in the architectural sphere. Uh, another question. Uh, so for Civil 3D, once you purchase uh, Civil 3D Dynamo, uh, is automatically there or you need to, is it a separate purchase? So it, download? it is part of it. If you have 2020, it's a separate download. If you're, if you're on 2021 or above, it should be pre-installed when you install. So there's no difference or for example, I have a Revit with Dynamo. So that Dynamo there is also that Dynamo in Civil 3D or it's a different no, Dynamo? No, it's a di different Dynamo. Uh, this Dynamo uses an older uh, Dynamo core. So the team developing this for Civil has been using, I guess, uh, 2.6. And the one that Revit is using, I think, is 2.11 or something like that. I may be wrong about that because I'm not up to date on that. I know that the Dynamo core at the Sandbox has progressed to where they've switched. They're starting to switch over the code driving it to C Python. This still uses the Iron Python engine that they released uh, for this like two years ago. Yep, uh, I'm seeing students here who has. I'm seeing IT uh, students here, computer science and IT. Uh, do you, do they have uh, an opportunity or a career in store for them if uh, they get to uh, know Dynamo? I would say yes, uh, because they're developing Dynamo in a sandbox world where it's not tied specifically to uh, an application. That would be the best way for them to get into it. They can go get in the sandbox, play with it. Uh, it'll give them a good idea of how to use it. Uh, you should be able to plug into applications from that, but you could also go get the application specific Dynamo and start playing with that too. Awesome. Okay, so uh, yep. Uh, if I if if I would like to learn uh, Dynamo, should uh, what's the programming language uh, most specifically related to Dynamo, if ever? Um. So if you're well, it really depends. Are you looking to make your own nodes, like I did here? That would be C sharp. C -sharp. Uh, if you're Wanting to code stuff directly in Dynamo, that would be Python. Because you can just use a code block and start typing code in here. Or you can, I think there's a, yeah, a Python script. You can just paste in your Python script here. Nope, wrong one. So if you know Python, you can just edit it right here. And every one of these nodes that aren't the ones I wrote are generally powered by Python. So all these 
a lot of these nodes over here are probably Python and you could probably in some way get to that code if you wanted to learn it that way. Okay. Yeah. And I've done a couple of those myself. Uh, I don't know Python as well, so it has been a little bit more challenging for me. Um, but it's a fun challenge for me. <laughs> I for uh, yeah. Uh, hmm. Any idea what the zero touch nodes are? Yes, zero touch are basically the nodes you create yourself. All of this oh. whole package is uh, zero touch. Um, I actually have posted a a lesson for AU this year on that specifically. Because for Civil 3D, there's very little uh, content out there on how to make zero touch. Yeah. And uh, can you share us more about uh, what design? Uh, I remember Sol, I forgot how to pronounce this, Amor. Is it Sol Amor? He mentioned about design script. Uh, can you share to us uh, what's your thoughts about design script? Um, I don't really have many. I don't really yeah. play with design script that much. Yep. Okay. So yeah. Uh, so definitely, if uh, if someone here would be interested in that, uh, Adam mentioned uh, highly suggesting you also know Python and uh, C sharp. Well, it's those are helpful. You don't have to know them to know Dynamo, okay. but if you want to go the next step beyond and make your own, that isn't already available in this library, then yes, you would want to learn one of those two. OK, yeah. Uh, yeah, for those who are who's asking about Grasshopper, I think Grasshopper. Can Grasshopper be used with Civil 3D? Not, right? No, it cannot. It's different. Yep. Totally different. OK, so yep. Uh, there's no more questions. <laughs> <laughs> Or probably, Adam, you have a questions to ask. Uh. <laughs> I don't. I do just kind of want to push um, some information, though. I've uh, submitted this class to for AU this year, uh, the same topic, actually. Uh, if you can go look for it at the AU um, yeah, class library. That, right? Yep. Yeah, just uh, come in you... here and like it. Uh, can you uh, paste uh, the link in our uh, private chat for, uh, for yep. me to encourage everyone to upvote that? Sure. Yeah, that would be really helpful because uh, I did one last year and I'm really wanting to go back and do another class this year. <laughs> yeah, for this year, definitely it's online, right? Uh, it is, and they moved it to October. So I don't know exactly when. Uh, I just know they moved it up from the traditional November. And uh, yeah, uh, how many times have you been an, an AU speaker? Uh, last year was my first time. <laughs> yeah, sadly, because uh, do you think it's more fun uh, online or the actual thing in so Las Vegas? I think... Going to it and attending is more fun. Um, speaking at it was a lot easier because it was online, because it was yeah. just talking to a camera. And even okay. then, last year, it wasn't to the camera. It was just to the microphone because they didn't record me. They just recorded my screen. Uh, but it was very fun because uh, when we got to do the Q&As, uh, we had... Um, just all the people that that watch the video come to ask questions, and it was kind of a fun experience to do that. It's harder to do that in person because you have that yeah. time limit for questions after the presentation. And in last year's uh, AU, they basically gave us a whole hour for Q and A, and people just watched the video on their own time before that. Yep, I'm flashing it now. 
Uh, awesome. So, yep. Uh, for those who ask questions, now is the time. And, yeah. Uh, if there's no more questions, I guess uh, we'd like... To, uh, yeah, Adam, uh, do you have any upcoming books uh, published or courses out there created I, by you? I don't. Um, I am really heavily involved in the Austin CAD user group. So, a lot of what I publish is just through our blog for that. Uh, or on our Discord channel, but I don't really get involved in writing. Uh, there's a lot of other talented people that do the writing, and I just steal their information. <laughs> <laughs> so once more, it's it's uh, Austin uh, CAD user group. Yep. So you're the AGN leader there as well. Yes, I am. Awesome. So yeah, guys. Uh, yep. If you're interested to know more about Dynamo Civil 3D. I think uh, Adam's group is also in Meetup, right? We are in Meetup, yes. But uh, what platform are uh, you mostly uh, in? Uh, We're most we have... active on our Discord channel. Discord. Uh, yeah, we're like a hundred and something people strong, usually 60 people online at any given time. Uh, very, very active most of the time to where we can give uh, instant question feedback. Yep. Uh, yeah, because most people are, most people here in the Philippines are not familiar with the Discord. So what do you think is the advantage of uh, Discord instead of having a, a Facebook group or a WhatsApp group? Um. There, I don't think there's any real advantage to it. Uh, it's it's not tied. Yeah, it's just a preference, not tied to any uh, online platform other than the Discord thing. Uh, we don't. It is basically just open. So, like in a Facebook group, uh, it's kind of moderated. We don't really moderate ours that much yet. Uh, we haven't seen a need to yet either. Um, yeah. But it is more fun because it has all the little emojis and uh, GIF stuff, and we can automate a lot of the stuff in Discord. But I think that just comes from Discord being traditionally for gamer type people, and they requested all that kind of stuff early on. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, like like what you have mentioned, I initially thought Discord was. Uh... For gamers, I had no idea mm -hmm. that uh, it can also be used, uh, yeah, for uh, this type of uh, advocacies. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so yep. Uh, if there's no more questions. Uh, we'd like to say thank you so much, uh, Adam. So also for those who are watching, if you have a message or an advocacy to share, like Adam. Uh, yep, inviting you to be our next share. Let's make a positive uh, difference by sharing uh, knowledge yeah, to everyone and hopefully uh, help them out, uh, find jobs, uh, elevate their careers by yeah, gaining something new. It's better to learn something new than <laughs> learning, learning nothing uh, uh, at all. So, yep, I think my final question to Adam, uh, when you started out, uh, learning Dynamo, was there a particular uh, site or resources you looked up? There is uh, the Dynamo Primer. Um, let's just look it up real quick because I don't have it bookmarked anymore. Primer. So dynamobim.org. Uh, this yeah. right here is everything you need to know t to learn the basics of Dynamo. I would suggest starting here and just working through it and reading if you're wanting to really learn how to use dynamo it won't be specific to any application it'll just be basic dynamo information and then if you want to learn it specific to an application uh, there's no real online help for civil at least but there is uh, a forum also uh, on the dynamo bim website where you can go and ask for help from all the other developers that play with Dynamo. Awesome. 
Yep. Uh, yeah, Adam, uh, uh, FYI, basically, uh, uh, we annually, we bring in uh, uh, new students or new people who, to uh, Autodesk Technologies every year. So, hoping, mm -hmm. uh, yep, this would be a sort of, if possible, an annual thing with you for those who have not uh, witnessed uh, what you have uh, shared to us and definitely it's technology it's always updating yep hoping to have you <laughs> yeah this was uh, fun that would, it would be great to come back and teach either this or something else yep so once more uh, thank you so much uh, Adam Riley so guys I hope you learned you've learned uh, something new you were inspired uh, to utilize uh, Dynamo Dynamo has a lot of applications uh, as Adam uh, mentioned so this time he, he showed to us uh, Dynamo's uh, uh, use uh, with Civil 3D and uh, yeah and as it uh, evolves so web once more uh, thank you so much Adam uh, hoping you can visit uh, our country in the near future our yep we'll you know Filipinos we love uh, <laughs> we'll have we'll have visitors so if ever there's there's a time in the near future your family can go uh, go on vacation here we're here to uh, yep. yeah look forward to you. trying to get over there soon awesome miss Nelsie uh... do you have more Thank anything you, to add <laughs> thanks Adam yeah you're welcome Okay, so yep, uh, I guess that's it. Uh, <laughs> thank you once more. Thank you so much, Adam. And yeah, hoping to see you soon. All right, have a good one, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, so yep, uh, guys, uh, if you're still there for... Are we going to provide certificates, uh, Nelsie? Hello. Hi, Nelsie. Hi, John Mark. Uh, let me uh, just share my screen. Yep, uh, I think our uh, upcoming uh, live stream uh, training uh, will be this next week, right? For Inventor. Yep, uh, I'm seeing... Uh, So for those who are interested to learn more uh, about about Inventor, Autodesk Inventor will be kicking off uh, our first uh, live stream training. So this is once more a series of monthly tw monthly trainings, twelve uh, monthly trainings to be exact. It will kick off. This coming April 30 for Master 2D Sketching in uh, Fusion 360. Yep, uh, yeah. Thanks you. Thank you all, guys, for the greetings to Adam. Yeah. Hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, good evening. Let me share to you our upcoming uh, live stream training here in Autodesk Community Philippines. So we'll be having a master product design with the Fusion 360 on April 24 and 25. That's uh, 1 to 3 p.m. And then Autodesk Revit Structure Basics, May 10 and May 13, 6.30 p.m. And then we have uh, Master Part Modeling 
in Fusion 360 on May 14. And on April 30, we'll be having Master 2D Sketching in Inventor. So if you're interested to join in any of our events, inviting you to register and join us in meetup.com. Okay, and uh, for the certificate of uh, event participation, we'll be releasing it um, by tomorrow. So you can start um, to drop us a message in Meetup. So message us in Meetup, Autodesk Community Philippines. Uh, state your, your name, your school name, and the title of the training. Okay, so uh, we'll be responding to your messages uh, by tomorrow. So our respond will, will be your course ID for you to claim your uh, certificate of event participation. Okay, uh, if you have questions regarding uh, certificates and trainings, you may drop it or post it in our comment section. Sir Joe Mark, do you have um, announcement to make? Yep, uh, I guess that's it. Uh, see you also in Master uh, 2D Sketching in uh, Inventor. Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Sir John Mark. Thank you guys for joining. I, I know it's um it's already late. It's nine o'clock in the evening and um thank you for joining us. Awesome.